this meeting is being recorded. And know if you could uh, roll call us in, and we'll get started with the comments shortly after. Yeah. Um, Josie? Here. Michael? Here. And Dan's not here yet. Great. Yeah. Yep, so we're going to get started with um, public comment. There's only a few people here in the crowd, but that is not going to stop anyone from hearing what they have to say. Uh, so we'll take both people as they raise their hands if you want to speak. Otherwise, we will move on to the next agenda item. Oh, okay, so we've got uh, Yaping. So here you go. Um, hello. Also, sorry, I don't know why there are two Zoom versions of me. I don't know how to get rid of the second one. Um, hi, uh, I'm visiting this committee today um, to more comment on something with the general commission. Um, so at the last commission meeting, there were, there were a lot of calls for um, having the report include different viewpoints and also a number of people talking about wanting those viewpoints to include looking into reforms such as um, better training and also addressing the complaint process. And um, I'm about to send an email, hopefully before the policing practices subcommittee, because um, about it's a compilation of articles and resources I found on um, the ineffectiveness of implicit bias trainings. Um, and also compilations of words from organizers who have been doing this work for decades. And I'm, I'm emphasizing that again, because I've mentioned that in public comment before, but I, um, based on some members of the commission continuing to bring up looking into the complaint process and trainings, I, I just really am confused about how much some members of this commission have spent time listening to these organizers, um, a lot of whom are Black women and who have been doing this organizing for so many decades. And um, to be honest, I've been so frustrated. I've spent hours the last, over the course of the last few days trying to compile these resources. And it has been so frustrating to feel like I need to find this proof that is so clear to so many of us in the community because we've heard this from abolitionist organizers who have been doing this work. And we've also read articles about how there's no scientific um, evidence to back up any effectiveness with implicit bias trainings and community oversight boards have been tried over the last century and have no effect because of basic, um, you know, power structures in society. And so um, I'm, I guess I'm also putting a call out for, Josie has spoken a, a lot about this, but I'm asking the other members of the commission to please take a stand and like represent what like these abolitionist organizers and, and those of us who are trying to relay their words we wouldn't just be promoting this because we like want to for no reason. It's because we want to see an end to as much violence as possible as quickly as possible. And these reforms waste time and money and they continue this cycle of reforms and things not changing that's gone on for the last 150 years. And so, you know, I'm, I guess I'm sorry, I'm emotional today because it's been so frustrating to do this research and just wonder whether it's even gonna get through and wonder why, especially the white commissioners who keep promoting these things don't care about listening to what black women who have been doing this for so many decades are saying. And in addition to that, just basic research, but um, they happen to actually line up with, for this, with the same conclusion. Um, yeah, and the Brattleboro Report says this really clearly. The Brattleboro Report um, recommends not pursuing any more training. It recommends stopping the training budget. It recommends disbanding their version of a community oversight board. And um, what's beautiful, though, is that there's a really clear solution of just defunding police and then reallocating those resources to community-led alternatives, and that's effective. So it's just confusing to me why the commission would entertain reforms which haven't been shown to okay time yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. i'm not used to cutting people off i'm sorry yeah Damn no this. no thanks sorry to push that. Okay. no it's okay please if you have any more to say please send it to me please send it to the commission um for public comment um thank you for showing up to so many of these um uh thank you for showing up to so many of these committees and subcommittees Does it be last yet at the end in terms of audio? Maybe it's my computer. I, no, I, I, can't, 
I hate I hate when it cuts out on me when I'm in the middle. Yeah, saying thank you for sending the commission so much information. I've definitely come through a lot of it, and it's helped uh, provide me with the language and the lens to see this work. Um, so next up, um, I don't know if you still have your hand up. The second one of you, okay. Um, but next up, we have uh, Rai Buckley. Hello. Um, to start, I really agree with everything Yaping just said. Um, I would love to try and say it again half as well, but I know I couldn't. Um, but I really, you know, we've just in the last full commission meeting, seeing the same ideas of reform come up again when that was you know, some of the first research I saw this commission doing and some of the clearest research about police review. Um, <clears throat> I was very happy to see that no one on this particular subcommittee was in that camp, but it was very disappointing to, to imagine that some of the other commissioners may just not be doing the research they should be. Um, I'm not really sure, um, but I'll follow that by just saying I really appreciate all the members of this subcommittee and everyone on this call right now for you know the really diligent research they've done you know the very you know intentional and just positive great work um for the community um really it was really encouraging to hear some of the really you know powerful statements folks made um particularly you josie um and i really appreciate that and i'm you know want to want to encourage i know that can't be easy so i want to encourage that um, and then on a little bit of a, a shift, I want to talk about something more specific with um, contracts and spending. I want to encourage this subcommittee not to recommend anything that relies on the detail work, the, uh, the large amount of money the police um, bring into the city through detail work, because any sort of you know reforms, period alternatives um, that relies on that money will rely on policing continuing to exist as a system in Northampton. Um, and so I think that's you know a lot of money and money that can definitely put towards good uses. I think if any systems rely on that money, they rely on the police existing and um, that detail work continuing to happen. And I think I've heard this you know subcommittee talk about a lot of ways in which that detail work is maybe not good for our community um, and. You've all said it better than I would, so I won't go back through those reasons. Um, but I'll end by saying thank you so much again for all the work you do, and have a good night. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so besides that, I don't see any other hands. I also don't see any other people besides our own uh, mission member, unless she wants to speak publicly here on this forum as well. But we'll give people a moment, or one person a moment, in case they want to close public comments. Okay. So with that being said, I think we're going to move on to the uh, agenda item, which is the approval of minutes. Uh, do we hear comments? Because presumably there are things on and probably should have seen. Do you know, Michael? I'm looking. I did not see minutes. For review, ready for website. Where is my list? No, we are caught up. Actually, awesome. we're good. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I don't know. Am I allowed to make a, a motion to approve minutes, or I know I can second it. Motion to <laughs> try again <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I miss here? Are we not? Are, are we not capable of approving? Oh, 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 yeah. No, I, sorry. I said that um, we are all caught up. Oh, we don't have to approve anything? No. Right. We're good. There's nothing to approve. All right, so nice. That's great. 
Uh, so the next thing on our agenda is just further, you know, further discussion about data card about police. And there's like, like you said, Michael, earlier, um, we got a lot of things forwarded to us. Uh, it's, oh, there he is. There's the man. Hey, everybody. Sorry, I was still in a work meeting that ran late. No, it's fine. We, you know, life happens. Yeah. <laughs> so I can fill you in. We had public comment. We had two comments uh, really urging us to push toward uh, abolition and to move away from detail work because detail work uh, provides an avenue for police to continue to exist. Um, and a bunch of other great stuff, looking at Brattleboro, Vermont's police abolition uh, movement for some inspiration. Um, and so those are the public comments. And then, yeah, now you're caught up. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> All right. Um, so we actually just, right before you came in, we just started, we were about to start talking about, you know, some of the things that were forwarded to us this week, um, looking a little bit at the contracts uh, um, uh, painstaking because it's not it's not words. I can't highlight. I can't search. It's just pictures. The contracts in the form of pictures. So I'm screenshotting pieces of it and reading it and trying to decipher what it means. It's not heavy in legalese per se, but it's still written in a way that I have, sometimes have to do double or triple takes in order to decipher fully. Um, discussion I just kind of started yeah if it's if it's helpful I went through um, I converted the PDFs to like OCR accessible PDFs of the contracts so like you can highlight stuff I can send those along I would love that that would make my life a lot easier <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm going to mute for a second. I'm going to transfer my mic over to my phone so that the whole me cutting out thing doesn't happen anymore. So just give me a moment. So I guess uh, while we're waiting for Josie just to pop back on, I would just ask both you, Dan and Josie, if when looking at the, the police contract, anything stuck out to you that you thought we should discuss? Um, the, so I only looked, if I'm honest, I really only looked at the parts of like vacation, sick leave, um, and those sort of things. Cause I was trying to account for the other chunks of time just so, so really broadly going like, all right, what, um, so like the 8,000 hours of training. And then I got hung up on like the different, like, so sick leave and uh, personal time, those are really easy to calculate, right? Everybody gets two days of personal time and there's an accrual for a sick time, you know, it's set. The variability, like I can't, I, can't, I don't think it, we could accurately even, even roughly account for vacation time just because there's, you know, almost 20 or almost 100% difference between people who are just starting and people who've been there 10 or more years and like without knowing which officers were doing what um, right. I mean, honestly, the at the end of the day, that the time that they spend on that part is less important. What matters more is like, at least to me, the call log. <laughs> um, but even in there, trying to reread what the the chief sent us, there's a lot that's like, <sighs> there's a lot that I'm not sure. Like, I understand how we might even pretend to account for. Um, in terms of like saying like, well, sometimes more than one officer goes to a call and we ask like, well, are the officers, are both of their times accounted for? And the answer was yes, as long as they put it in right. <laughs> um, yeah. And so like, I'm less like certain um, in terms of the accounting for time. I still, I mean, we can still say, you know, how many calls the department's getting you know, 
for those doesn't account for officer time, but at least this, you know, if, if, you know, we're able to interface with some of these other departments to say, here's the call volume that you might expect around substance use. Um, although that's also a little difficult because substance use could be drugs, like, or like the drugs category could be, you know, substance use and someone who's like actively overdosing versus someone who's, you know, like um, a lot of the calls were just like picking up needles off the ground or things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you have to wonder about right where drug dealers fit in, where you know all of that. Yeah. It all putting it under one umbrella is very confusing. Yeah. Um, the other part, like the things that I've looked at, um, like I just sort of perused like the body cameras, and pulling off the top of my head, so I apologize. Um, but like the body cameras are sort of like what are the rules if Northampton adopts body cameras? <laughs> um, but there's nothing really more in there, and personally, I don't think. The evidence shows that body cameras work um, in the way that we might expect. Um, I think I looked up the I looked at the indemnity because that always comes up, um, right? And it's a short section, if I recall correctly. But I'm not sure how I'm not sure how indemnity would work if it was like the city saying like we were removing the indemnity clause or protections or limiting them in some way. So right now the limit's at like $100,000. What if it was limited to $20,000? Um, you know, so those sort of things. And I don't, I, don't, I don't even know, I don't have the expertise to sort of say what that would mean or how that fits in with the state law. Um, right. This time, and that's something that we could ask the, we could ask the solicitor um, about, I, I just, I don't feel comfortable myself knowing both of those. Right. It's um, that was, I, the new. Yeah, go ahead, Josie. Sorry. Well, I was going to say like that was a that was a big hurdle I was kind of trying to get over in terms of some of the wording in some of the sections was like in accordance to laws and ordinances, and it felt kind of loose whether it meant like state laws or you know city laws and ordinances, and um, it's it quote unquote legally speaking, it seemed like. There is a there is very little that could be done in terms of the contracts until the next negotiation cycle, which is obviously what we'll be kind of um, pushing for, uh, which is I, believe, I think it's July 2022, sometime sometime in that um, time frame. Um, but that being said, something that I thought was really interesting was just how much um, like managerial power uh, the city of Northampton has over the police. Uh, such as, uh, you know, determining staffing, uh, determining, uh, you know, direct employment um, transfers, uh, you know, fundings and, and just the, the, what the city of Northampton is actually capable to do in terms of um, managing the police department. I thought it was actually uh, pretty good in terms of what we could push for in terms of recommendations. Yeah. The other part of this, and it's not, at least I don't recall, um, like there's nothing in the contracts that specify about staffing levels. And I know that the chief tries to, or it aims for five, you know, five officers on duty at all times. Um, and is, you know, I think rightly concerned because it's hard you can't predict when when something's gonna when something bad is gonna happen um right like you always you always want to have some crisis responder um but i think what we could do is to start to look at recommendations for that as well um and again i think just looking really closely at this just to make sure that there's nothing that would run afoul but to say all right so if we have five emergency responders on call, you know, three of them are peer led or uh, from, you know, the sort of peer responder, civilian responder, unarmed officer response um, and recommending that, that you know, we can still keep the five people <laughs> to respond to emergencies, but not have it be just officers, that it could be coordination from across multiple departments. Um, the same thing, a lot of the calls, you know, that 
that the police take, um, and it looks like a lot of them are like uh, medical emergencies. And you know, does it make sense? You know, do we also want to think about? So I think we'll, we might want to look a little bit more at the logs in terms of call volume, um, just to say, all right, maybe we want more folks who are able to uh, respond to medical emergencies, and we want the right folks to do it. Um, and that could be the city starts hiring EMTs or contracting out with, um, you know, the organizations that they already do. Um, the other part of this, and it's related, I don't know what folks said about Brattleboro, but one of the things that I found really interesting was the removal of firearms um, from officers when they're just on patrol and, you know, <laughs> just out and about during the day. Um, so they, the officers still have access, or in the Brattleboro proposal, officers would still have access to, I'm going to call it less lethal, <laughs> you know, um, tasers and um, mace, even though we know those things can be lethal, you know, if they're, if they're used on people, um, but less lethal than a firearm in most cases. So, um, and I don't think I saw anything in the contract that said that they couldn't change what equipment officers were you know, we're using. I don't believe there was anything. Yeah. Um, but just making sure that that's in there. You know, they can still have firearm training. You know, I think that's. I, I doubt that that's going to go, and I doubt that there would be anything to remove firearms from the police, like the arsenal in general. Um, but really emphasizing, you know, when it's day to day work where you don't need that. Um, I think indemnity is the biggest one, but. Um, yeah, firearms, um, sort of stream of conscious at this point. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I, I agree with a lot of what you just said. Uh, I also think that, you know, if we're going, obviously, at least in my vision, is, uh, you know, eventually get to abolition, but of course there are many steps along the way. But, you know, removing firearms from patrol officers makes a lot of sense. But also just, uh, putting a system in place to, you know, just demilitarize the police in general, and maybe and maybe even gain some money back in the process. Uh, you know, like do all we need Northampton police to be, you know, literally geared up for for SWAT uh, events, SWAT level events. I mean, we are a fairly small city. Um, that's not to say that we completely get rid of their means to protect, protect themselves. But again, a strong community doesn't really need uh, much SWAT level protection, I guess. I mean, there are other, there are other uh, kind of institutions in place, whether that be like state police or God. No, nah, I'm sorry. My, my brain is just fried from just so much teaching and, I'm also stream of consciousness at the moment. Um, I think one of the things that that comes up with this, and this is again sort of where we might want to focus some of our attention and energy um, when we're talking about um, the the responses, is that we still do need to know what and to dig into what the state requires. Um, in terms of those things, but um, one of the things that um, a counselor brought up in a conversation was, you know, canine units and limiting their use, um, especially in terms of using them as weapons. So in crowd control situations, things like that. Um, another, and Alex has brought this, and I think the alternatives um, subcommittee will have something more is like the detail work, moving detail work away from the department the, the police department exclusively. And so opening it up to other city employees, to civilian flaggers, I don't think we're gonna be in a position where there won't be detail work, um, <laughs> right? Just in, in terms of like the, the requirement to have, you know, safety um, at different events and at different, um, different things. But who does that detail work? I think we could change um, and to also, you know, and, and this is something we've talked about is to specify some portion of that detail pay that's still going to come in, right? The city, the city is still going to get paid for that detail work, regardless of who does it. 
um, they're still going to have their their chunk of that, and to allocate that um, to specifically you know anti-racist uh, initiatives in the city, um, it could be even you know we've explored this a little bit is the issue of micro grants. <laughs> um, and things like that, because there's nothing, again, there's nothing in the, the city's police, in the city contract with patrol officers um, that I've seen that would limit that power either. Um, or, or like, there's nothing that says like the, the police get some cut of that in this. There might be other documents out there, but the police, the police uh, union contract, I don't see anything. Um, the rest is all pretty standard. I think it's really just, um, yeah, um, I, I've got it open now. I just wanted to scroll through it. Um, but just just taking what you were just talking about, and and I, you know, I don't know if either of you had a chance today to look at what Noah forwarded from the district attorney district attorney's office. Um, I took a quick peek, and you know, it's I'm a little confused because the the thing where it says Northampton Police Department trials, there's only 13 of them over a two year period. Um, so I was a little bit confused that, you know, how many, how many times are they, you know, I mean, you know, and then, then the other part of that, pardon me, before I go too, too forward, um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them that look like they were, uh, traffic violations. So the person obviously, you know, uh, wanted to fight their ticket or, or whatever it may be. Um, and, and I, so I looked at that and I thought, boy, that doesn't seem like very many considering, you know, what we kind of understand for the number of traffic stops or, I mean, I guess that people just pay the ticket and don't contest it. But some of this, I, I was surprised when, when I saw that, that there were only 13 lines on the thing that, that made me wonder a lot about that. And when I looked at the charges specifically, marked lanes violation, inspection sticker, speeding, negligent operation, um, you know, negligent operation, license suspended, uh, possession of an open container in a motor vehicle. So there had to have been a, a, a pull over for that and then find out that there was alcohol in the car. The, but, but every one of those things to me, I don't, don't look at those and think, okay, this requires an armed response. Um, you know, and so, you know, it is really, um, it, you know, really a little, a little confusing to me that that this police work leads to to so so few trials, and and that's something that you know we we sort of known and, and Lois talked about this too, which is that a lot of times you a, a police a police officer might arrest someone, they probably won't be charged. A lot of times they're not. When they are charged, it's frequently and there's a couple there's a few different mechanisms, right? So one is overcharging so that someone will take a plea deal. Um, and the other is just taking a plea because they don't know they have other options. So very things go to trial, <laughs> um, which is sort of what the system is. But I think one of the things that we can say is that there's very few trials because there's very, you know, there's not a lot of crime in Northampton and especially like the sort of real, I don't want to say real, but like the real crime that we think of, of like, you know, murder and, you know, violent assaults and all of these things. It's, even the, <laughs> I mean, in it just in here in Ward One, I know of two violent assaults um, in the last number of months. Not not the last two months, not the last year, but in the last handful of months, two violent assaults. One one was really bad, and one was something that that would uh, make anybody uh, concerned. But at the same time, uh, you know, we we do have we do have police now. Uh, and who were able to respond to those things. And so I think to your point, I, I think about that was two, you know, and, and so it's not, it's not an overwhelming amount in this city. And I, and, and I've, I mean, I, I'll, I'm just going to break away for a second and say what I've said to a number of people, if Northampton can't study emergency response, you know, no city can, I mean, we're a relatively safe city, um, you know, with a, with a, with a pretty, pretty good, um, you know, I think conscientious population. So if we can't study it, nobody can. Absolutely. Um, and to that, um, you know, 
we're we're really kind of just sifting through the data we do have. So it's not to say that you know there aren't like smaller scale incidences that you know uh, might require some form of intervention, not police, of course, but that would actually take advantage of those new services that we're providing. Uh, a large part of so many uh, quote unquote crimes or incidences, uh, you know, there's a huge portion of them that go uh, unanswered or unreported. And uh, part of that definitely has to do with the fact that people don't feel comfortable calling the police at their current capacity uh, and their current role that they play within society. Uh, I know there have been instances of, you know, uh, drunk disorderly conduct amongst uh, places that I have been at, amongst people that I have known, and people have always sort of, uh, you know, avoided calling uh, police uh, in fear that it might escalate to an undesirable degree. Uh, now, instead, if we put into uh, social safety nets and social programs that they could get people the help they need in terms of maybe perhaps substance abuse or mental health crises, we'll actually see those, uh, you know, institutes that we have spent the time advocating for and setting up uh, actually see a lot of use in our community and thus uh, really helping heal a lot of what people fear uh, from the police right, really being able to serve this community in the places that it needs uh, instead of people uh, choosing to live with their their day-to-day discomforts in fear of bringing in a kind of violent force that could really uproot the lives of so many of our residents. Um, I think one of the things that's that's interesting, and I think it'll be worth exploring a little bit, um, in terms of, of what we, it's something to bring back to the larger, um, the commission sort of related to that, even though, I mean, so we have, uh, what, um, you know, 13, 13 trials and looks like five plea bargains. So 18, you know, 18 people went to court out of the 681 people that were arrested. Right. <laughs> Actually, you know what it says at the bottom here? I just noticed this. Total trials are eight because sometimes there's multiple charges against one person. So it's only one trial. So it's eight trials and five pleas. So it's 13 out of, what was it, 681? Yeah, the, the Northampton um, Police Department, their total arrests slash custodies is 681. Um, there's 604 people that were adult arrests. Um, the only thing that I know is a caveat, um, and I don't think it's represented in this, is that um, the, um, the way that um, the police log arrests sometimes it's holding somebody who was like publicly intoxicated but then they're released and i don't know what the breakdown is of that um but it still seems like a huge discrepancy of <laughs> what's happening and i don't even know if that's i don't know if that's common um you know across massachusetts but that seems like something to to poke at and to understand. Um, I think we had looked at this in terms of like how many people are being arrested um, and what is that costing the city um, to, to do those things. And, you know, it's a lot of arrests and not a lot of, um, and not a lot of legal action afterwards, which isn't necessarily bad, um, right. but I think it's telling in terms of what are, why are people being arrested if there's not a reason? Well, and I think it, it reminds me of a, of a comment that you made, Dan, a number of meetings ago um, about the fact that, you know, what do we classify as crime? I mean, are some people being arrested and then we're looking at it going, uh, you know, and again, is it the district attorneys at the police department, whoever saying, well, this, this was a one, this was a one-off, we're gonna not proceed forward with charging this person. So was it a really, bad criminal behavior or or was it just something where maybe the person needed to be protected for the night from themselves or or whatever it's, it's um you know again when you, when you just start to look at those numbers boy it's it's hard to kind of comprehend it yeah and this is something that i think we'll have to 
to poke more at because we didn't we didn't really get this until yesterday evening and i'll admit i like opened them went oh that's not a lot and then <laughs> immediately back to <laughs> um the the outreach that we were doing and then the and then i was doing more work for my actual job <laughs> um but yeah i think one of the things so i <sighs> I haven't had the chance, but one of the things that I thought would be interesting would be to compare some of the language between the other collective bargaining agreements. Um, I mean, I, obviously the police have a very different, um, you know, they're, they're not at school teachers um, in terms of what the, the scope might cover, right? Um, but thinking about what are the protections that are offered to, you know, uh, school teachers in you know in their contract and where does that differ with um where does that differ with the police department and specifically looking at sort of what are the the managerial interventions and i think josie talked about this like what what powers does the city have um in general and what do they have in other instances that we might want to include in terms of language recommendations um, for the next round of collective bargaining agreements with the police to say, you know, this is, um, these are things that we're concerned about or things that like the city can, can oversee other things in other departments. Why don't they see that in this, those sort of things. Um, otherwise I don't, I don't have a lot for, for contracts yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I spent, no. I wanted to mention a, a couple things. Um, oh, sorry, Josie, you can go ahead if you want. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, one thing was that the Brattleboro report that was sent to us, um, Ya Ping came to the city council meeting the other night and mentioned uh, that and that she hoped that the counselors would, would get it. So I did forward that to, to Laura Kressler to send to all the counselors and they, and they did get it. Uh, so hopefully they'll be familiarizing themselves all with that. I have been, and I also was looking at, you know, only because we, we talked a little bit about how, how other communities are, you know, taking some of these ideas and putting them into their city, uh, you know, city budget, city hierarchy, however it may be. Uh, so I was looking at Albuquerque, New Mexico, Berkeley, California, and Brattleboro, basically. And I, I mean, I, I haven't gotten far enough yet to even comment on it, but, but I just wanted to mention to you that I was, that I was working on that, uh, you know, and that, and that specifically the, uh, the council had gotten the Brattleboro report too. That's awesome because the the Brattle were the for a lot of the other ones that I've read, it's you know, we're talking the, the um San Francisco one is like this gigantic multi-million dollar sort of reinvestment plan. Right. It's and that, such a huge city. Um, you know, and those sort of things do impact, you know, if we're talking about multi, like the minimum requirements um for staffing. And I would hope that we could. And maybe this is another question for the, you know, to ask the chief very, you know, because we'd asked what their staffing, you know, what was, how did they determine staffing levels? And the answer was, we, we just did five, or we want five people, but it doesn't really explain why, or like, what, what that means. Um, and then, you know, the other sort of the, you know, look at the UCR where, depending on how you interpret, <laughs> what the chief sent us with a 2.08 employee. If that's all employees, then, you know, we're under. If that's just patrol officers, we're over. Um, so I don't know exactly where that fits, but, um, you know, but also like looking at the, the respective crime rates for different places, you know, there are other, like in a lot of, in a lot of ways, you know, Northampton has that, that sort of space of being, it's very, it's fairly affluent. <laughs> It's large, but still fairly small. Um, you know, we're at the lower bound of that. You know, that estimate is for cities that are have 25,000 people to like 65,000, forget the exact, but like, you know, that's double <laughs> that are right. into that aggregate. So like, is this really that far off? And 
what happens, I mean, you know, just doing a simple what if analysis, right? So based on the past five years, what if you had four officers or three officers, what happens to service? Um, like, are there, you know, do you end up with the times where somebody couldn't respond? And then thinking again about how we might include a space for non-police responders within that calculation. Um, which I don't know if the, I'll admit I've, I've like gone through and read the Brattleboro report, but like I've had to go back a couple of times just because it's so much to take in. Um, a lot, yeah. And I don't recall seeing something specifically about like what officer time um, might be or like what staffing would be um, in that. Could be wrong. Um, I've been wrong before. <laughs> and it might be hidden in there or um, I just went blank. There's um, a joke there, but I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, by the way, is that that's your water bottle that's green there? Yeah. In front of. Yeah, I I thought it was your lamp. That's why I made the joke about your shirt and your lamp matching the other day. And then it didn't it fell flat. And I was like, oh, and then the next meeting I saw, I was like, oh, that's actually his water bottle. It's not his lamp. Although I didn't yeah. notice it matches your shirt again tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's a theme. Um, like <laughs> my couch is a similar color. Like it's just it's one of those things. If everything matches, it, like it kind of looks like you were coordinated. <laughs> Just choose the same color for everything. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry to get off track. I I couldn't resist though because I had to ask. So, I think we're. Um, I said that I would, and I will still plug in the values that. I can for like the estimates of like time off and things. I think we're still going to end up with a chunk of time that we don't have information for, and that might end up being. Um, so going back to just thinking about like what the costs are, but what what I think we can sort of say is that at least from what we can tell in 2019, still feels like about 17% of officers' time was spent responding to calls um compared to all of the other things they were doing and that kind of tells us you know again just using the chief's estimates of 35 and a half patrol officers um and then the 17,000 hours of um of time um it might help us to um, to really understand what we're asking of other departments, but we still also need to initiate some of those communications to to figure out, or at least to think about like what divisions might look like. like do we want to write up something about what the the load is? Um, because I know other other subcommittees are talking about you know sort of these recommendations, but to say. Yeah, at some point we start to have we have to start talking about like what would be expected of these these subcommittees what would be a reasonable expectation um, if we're talking about pilots um, for different programs at least for our report i think it's even if it's rough and it's general um, just to give guidelines i really do i've said this before i'm still concerned about providing recommendations that aren't they don't have really strong and measurable things along with them. Like, I'm just concerned that it'll just be recreating the police rather than having a, a firm alternative. Um, so I still think it's worth poking at and I will commit time to doing that. Um, no, absolutely. I absolutely agree. I think, I think part of it is, is, you know, what, I mean, it really gets down to the crux of what so much has been discussed in the general in the general meetings is like what truly is our our vision and our goal in terms of uh, giving our recommendations and how do we get there? And and Dan, I, I totally agree with you in that like we need to. There's a part of me that's like we need to absolutely 
kind of create this this iron fortress of a recommendation with very concrete steps and the numbers and the percentages and exactly where the funding is coming from and where it's going to uh, in order to really be able to stand uh, on some sort of foundation for abolition to actually be realized. That being said, you know, the, the, the sand, the time is, 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 is coming, it's coming faster and faster. It's looking like more and more difficult to, to reach that, that level of like very precise knowledge because there's just been so much information that's either been very dense to comb through, very unclear, very hard to interpret, just a lack of information in general from both uh, the police chief and from just that is generally uh, available out there. And I think part of what our recommendation should be is a small portion of, uh, you know, the city's budget in general be set aside for a continuation of this type of uh, commission, uh, maybe with some of us, but compensated so that people can continue doing the good work at, of, of trying to decipher all of this, all of this information. Because quite frankly, the, the more we get forwarded and the more we discover the more is put on our plate and none of us are, none of us are being paid for it. And we've all, including people, members of the community have put, have put painstaking amounts of labor uh, into seeing the success of, of this commission uh, in putting forward strong uh, radical changes. Um, and so with that in mind, I think that we outline, uh, maybe it's not today, maybe it's during the next meeting, but I think we outline some form of, you know, steps program in terms of what what we think given the information that we have solid or otherwise uh we see the northampton uh police department be defunded and have that uh the, that divestment reinvested in the creation of these uh alternatives these peer-led programs um that that the community would absolutely benefit for uh with the continued emphasis on you know observing the effectiveness of it, um, where that money could better be spent in the process of also finding out where some of that money can be divested from. Um, I think when we started this, a large, a large portion of, I think when this whole process started, a large like uh, issue was that one, we definitely needed the, the, the money to be defunded, but there was just so little support for this type of commission to succeed. Um, and I think for it to properly succeed, there needs to be some accountability and some formation, uh, preferably community led to continue this work instead of just like blindly putting it into the hands of, no offense, Michael, both of the city council and the, uh, and the, the, the mayor to just kind of look at it and be like, all right, we'll do these things and we won't do those things. I think, I think it, this requires a lot more. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I agree with you uh, so much about what you just said there. Um, you know, the, one of the things that came up in June uh, to me that I thought was interesting was that the, the, the mayor before Mayor Narkowitz, Mayor Higgins, she had put together this, this uh, large coalition to write the sustainability plan for Northampton. And it gets reviewed uh, every, I think it's 10 years or every five years, maybe uh, the, the sustainability plan, because, you know, it's recognized that, you know, various uh, issues around the climate are going to, we're going to learn more. And so that sustainability plan is updated every five years. Uh, I, I don't think that this is the kind of thing you can walk away from for five years. I think this is ongoing work uh, for a community like ours. Um, you know, and I, I don't, yeah, I, I agree with you, perhaps, perhaps finding a different way to do this work. Maybe, maybe it's through a paid, uh, you know, a stipend or, or something for, to put together a group that would continue to study policing and, and crisis response. Um, I, but I don't think I don't think we can walk away from this in March and think, okay, we're we're good. We, the city of Northampton did it. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be an ongoing discussion, and we have we have plenty more to learn. So I think, considering what what we have um, so far, I think really we have to get down to what recommendations we can make. Um, and I think summarizing what we do know, um, both 
to let the other um, subcommittees um, know what we've been doing, what we've been stabbing at, um, what our, you know, what the limitations are, um, where their readings might be important or useful. I know, um, like uh, Namdi was looking at like school resource officers, um, and you know, is there anything um, in turn like? Um, but like looking at like the the Massachusetts state laws in addition to the local the local ones. Um, so are there any other things that are concerning for them that we would need to look at? Um, but also where where the areas are that we have concern. Um, I think if if other if other people have readings of like what like how we might remove reduce or change the indemnity. Um, the indemnity clauses of the union contracts, which I mean, that's a huge undertaking, right? Um, in terms of, of what there will be political fight and fallout um, for that recommendation. Um, I still think it's probably worth making um, as, you know, at least look into this, but, you know, why is the city responsible for $100,000 worth of damages? Um, in, in what in what ways has that been used in the past? I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't even know if we have we have access to that information yet. Um, we could ask for it. I don't know if we'd get it in time to make something. Right. Um, but just thinking about what we can do to define the deliverables um, uh, to the to the larger commission and where we can sort of increase collaboration too, because I feel like we're even though we've done a lot. We're also the sort of reactive group. <laughs> like we've been proactive in a lot of these things, but but we have to be reactive to what the recommendations are. Um, so thinking about where where in the budgets we have access to additional funds, where or not access to, but where where there might be, you know, either convergence or um, the space for for setting aside different funds that the city gets. Um, and what would happen, you know, we haven't talked about like what a budget cut would be, but what happens if the city, or what happens if our recommendation is a, you know, a 10% progressive cut to the police each, each year, right? Um, to a certain end, right? To make sure that the staffing of other responses, <laughs> like so that there's still that minimum, that minimum staffing, those sort of things. Um, you know, so that we can have something that's a timeline that makes sense. Um, I think a lot of the um, the police um, the police department has had a number of officers resign recently. Um, what does that do to their What does that do to the police budget? What happens if there's vacancies? Where does the money go at the end of the year if there's a vacancy? Um, which I actually don't know, um, and I haven't been able to find sort of what that. Any any money that gets allocated to a department, and this goes for for all the departments that they that they don't spend, um, gets returned to the general fund, and I think I think then gets because the taxpayers are taxed for that money, even though it's not spent, uh, it gets put into the sustainability or stability fund, the stability stabilization fund, something yeah. like that. So that might be something to for us to sort of say, you know, if the police department, if the police have vacancies to fill, wouldn't it be great if when those vacancies aren't filled that we can still divert those funds to one of these new departments rather than losing it to the, um, rather than losing it to the stability fund? Yep, interesting. Hi, um, my name's Francis. I'm sorry I'm a little late to the meeting. Um, it occurs to me as I'm listening to you guys um, that there are some, I know this is the budget committee, there are some reforms which are free, like re-looking at officer misconduct, um, like the, the written document about what constitutes misconduct. Um, is, I don't know if that's the work of another committee um, or if, there, if there's, um, um, I just wanted to add that into this discussion that, um, one of the one of the things that a public committee can help do is look at those documents um, and do that work of editing them. Um, if because the police department, you know, that, so the police department doesn't have to hire a consultant 
um, to relook at their conduct, their code of conduct policies, um, or their policies about what uh, what constitutes appropriate termination um, or citation for different officers. Um, but I'm, so I'm, if somebody might be willing to answer for me, if there's another committee that's doing that, um, I got my name. So, uh, yeah. Nice so thank, thanks. Thanks for the comments. I actually think that. Um, thank you. Uh, we typically have public comment at the start of our meetings. Uh, for today, it was it was a little while ago. But if you want to, uh, you know, submit any further comment to this subcommittee, you're more than welcome to uh, email us at the commission or to, I believe, Noah, who can then send it out to all of the commissioners. Um, but uh, thank you for that. I, I, we appreciate it. Um, in terms of other committees that you could probably go to their, uh, like, what are they called? Public, public, I don't even remember what the, the public comment. There is another committee meeting today at seven. Um, and I, I'm not sure I can look at, uh, I'm not sure if they have a public comment at the beginning of their subcommittee, but they might. The agendas can be found online. Um, on the Northampton website, I believe. Yeah, so there's the uh, email in the, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, that, the set, the next meeting is is uh, policies and services, which I think, Francis, is kind of what you're talking about. Uh, they're, they're um, you know, ball of wax there, but there doesn't appear to be public comment in their in their agenda. Even for even for subcommittees that don't um, like Josie pointed out um, that anyone can um, anyone can reach out um, through the um, email um, that we sent. And there's also there is um, there's public comment at the general meetings that we have, and that's all all of the commissioners too. Um, in terms of in terms of phrasing, though, I do like the idea of like here are here are changes that are free. <laughs> um, I don't want to let anybody off the. Yeah. Um, I don't want to let the, the city <laughs> off the the hook like to commit to funding these initiatives. Like some some things need need money. They need to be you know sort of solidified. Um, two other areas that come to mind thinking about that. Um, if we look at the, one of the things that I've thought about in terms of contract language um, with other groups that, that might be um, employed with the city or implied, em, sorry, not employed, employed, but like that might be used by the city. Um, so like EMS contracts, um, but also where there are other groups. Um, so like I know ServiceNet has some, but there are other service organizations, but thinking about what language um, we would want to have included uh, around um, accountability in those contracts. So, you know, language that the city can throw into every single contract with every group um, that, it, that it works with about needing some sort of accountability structures in place to the communities that are most impacted by that service. Uh, or we're receiving services from that <laughs> that group, um, and that the city has some form of control over as well um, in terms of, you know, how does how is that that accountability measured, what's determined, and have that be you know something that we both the city has expectations for accountability that that organization ideally would already have accountability structures in place, but if they don't, we'd want to see them as well. Um, and having be that that be one of the the driving you know factors of you know do we have a contract with this with this group, um, is this a group that we want to provide services to our people, um, I think that's going to be important to do. And I haven't, I've looked at like some accountability language, but none of it I, I haven't found language that I've that I've personally like wow that's really good. A lot of it sort of feels super like so generic that there's no real accountability. <laughs> um, but, but thinking about that as well um, and where that language might fall. Uh, 
and I would like to have that, that would... bring to the the commission at some point, the full commission. So I'm just sort of just adding to my to do list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, and I don't think I don't think there's a single person who's worked as hard as you. If I'm being honest, you're, you are tremendous. <laughs> if, if we were being compensated, I'd give you half of what I got. <laughs> <laughs> I would not complain, um, but um, at the same time, I do think. I mean, I think we're all doing what we can, and everyone's still dedicating a lot of time um, to this. And, and as you said, it's all volunteer. And it's all, you know, sort of what you have capacity for. Yeah. Um, true. True. But one of those things would also mean, you know, for part of this, and this is in the, the state reforms, um, you know, we have to think about what like this, what do they call them? Oh, it's like the civilian oversight sort of organizations and what teeth they have, uh, which is virtually none um, in yeah. state law. Um, so thinking about if we use that as the baseline, that's, you know, that's what they have. What can we add to that at the city, at the city level? Um, and again, I think those are going to be something that the, um, the police, like the, the police, the, the police department, the the union, their lawyers are also going to have a lot of feelings about, um, and there's going to have to be some negotiation, you know, with the city where this, where accountability lives. Um, you know, is there a new magical uh, city's ombudsman <laughs> who would handle those things? Um, you know, across the whole city, so not just the police department, but but all of them. Um, if there's a new department, um, what is that? You know would they handle those sort of things? And if so, what does that mean? You know, it's, it's nice because it's outside of the, the police department to handle accountability issues um, and complaints and things like that. Um, but what, would, what could they be empowered to do? How would, they, how would they do it? All of those sort of things are gonna be the sort of legal loops that I'm not necessarily comfortable saying I know. Uh, from my understanding, it is a PDF, but it is a PDF of like an image. <laughs> and so you can't like highlight words. Um, no, I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying. Um, Dan, I just had a thought and it left my brain. It might come back. There's a there's a number of communities that have, and, and companies, quite honestly, one of the larger companies that I do business with on a weekly basis um, has, uh, you know, named and uh, hired an office of diversity and equal opportunity. Um, and, you know, I think this kind of falls in with um, the, the health, uh, the Board of Health's uh, resolution on racism as a public, uh, public crisis, you know, and, you know, putting offices like this together to, to just, you know, deal with so many issues, you know, is, uh, is something that that can really help this cause so greatly. You know, I even I, I wanted to mention also just so everybody would hear that tomorrow night at five o'clock city services and city um, community resources subcommittees of city council are meeting uh, for four presentations on housing insecurity um, in Northampton. So that meetings uh, at five o'clock tomorrow. Um, you know, in the agendas online, uh, if you if you care to participate or, or uh, listen along, um, but this is something, you know, again that that I think has got to be addressed in Northampton too, Dan. Uh, absolutely. Uh, do you know if there's public comment uh, for that um, meeting? There's there's two portions of public comment. One is at the beginning; it's kind of a general public comment, and then specifically mm -hmm. around housing security, uh, there will be a public comment period after the four presentations. Yeah, I I, I think I'm going to show up tomorrow. As exhausted as I may be, I think it's super important to be there. Um, you know, we have all this data on 
on how heavily the houseless population is policed and, you know, if we just attend to their material conditions and uh, raise them up and give them the necessary things, then we will not only, uh, you know, make the footprint of the Northampton Police Department much, much smaller, um, but we'd also stop all of these, you know, kind of unwanted interactions that just further kind of inflame the situations that people already find themselves in. Uh, it also takes a lot of, you know, responsibility off the plate of Northampton Police Department. And these are all things that we've already talked about here at this question a bunch, uh, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to say it again. Yeah, I think um, I'm just looking at my email here. Noah did forward um, the agenda uh, for that. So you mm -hmm. have it, Josie. Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's good. I, I think here. that's really, really great. If you if you could, if you had had some things to bring to that, that would be great. Sure. Same. Um, some kind of actionable ideas that, um, uh, you know, we can either, you know, start thinking about today or during our next meeting, which we should also discuss when that will be, uh, so that we, <laughs> uh, my class time, uh, my bad, um, are, you know, we've already have some of the, the framework and the foundation in our preliminary report, but uh, like, are there some, kind of things we want to work toward in terms of this, in terms of this final report. Yeah, go for it, Dan. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that's missing for me is some specificity in like what, uh, so when we say like we want reallocation of the, or we want allocation of the funds that were cut. Um, and we give some examples of like, you know, water and like water access and things. Um, I think one of the things that's important to note is that you know, we want to make sure that the recommendations are concrete enough that they don't, that it's not just, oh, we already do that. Um, like one of the things, right, we're talking about like access to clean bathrooms, <laughs> um, but we probably want to, spe and not probably, like I would want to specify like these need to be indoors, they need to be maintained, they need to be safe. Um, you, because otherwise we get into the, well, there are bathrooms because there are porta potties. Um, and so like really saying like it needs to be an indoor space that's warm, uh, it needs to be something that's clean, there needs to be access to potable water, and um, that's another one. So like making sure that we right. say we want access to potable water that's not like bottled water that's been donated from Coca-Cola, which is really great, like so Mana can distribute that, that bottled water out to people, but that doesn't help if you know you're, if you need water for other things at you know in the like late in the evening <laughs> or um when that's not available and it doesn't help if you you're looking you're thinking about you know potable water um or water that's that's um accessible for sanitation right um to be able to wash your hands and and um you know warming shelters i know we've talked about like the resiliency hub but also just thinking about like daytime warmings like daytime warming shelters um you know locker storage um, those are some of the things that um, I know the Pioneer Valley Housing um, has talked about that as well. Um, and so, or I guess, sorry, they're a, a touch the sky now. Um, but like thinking about making those real concrete recommendations um, in terms of like, these are the things that the, that the community is really concerned about and then list them out. Um, so that we have them because I don't want to produce something that can be easily dismissed as we are to do those things let's move on um, that we want it to be these these are the things that we want and we we know we can do better as a city um, so that's something that I would like to to see us do um, yeah I absolutely have, um, I know it's going to be hard to see but I have my sort of scribbles of all of the things that I think we need to sort of work on to finalize um, so like Sure. Some of these are just like the graphs and explanations that we have, um, the contract and language recommendations um, that we want to make um, for the collective bargaining agreements. Um, I've highlighted indemnity, accountability, and ma managerial processes, um, but also looking at the revenue and expenditures. So really trying to pull out what money is coming in from the police department um, mm -hmm. in the city, um, but also what goes out. 
um, just to understand it as best we can, the call volume, which is sort of those graphs and explanations, um, but like what we would, what we expect for the needs for emergency response as they stand now. Uh, mm -hmm. Staffing recommendations, I think we can also explain really carefully that five police officers at a time for every shift is great for the old model of policing, but in the new one, maybe there are there's room for less police officers or fewer police officers because we want other trained professionals that will handle those calls. Um, but expressing that and then sort of, if we can find examples of where those, where those have worked, um, thinking about how those, how that works with um, any requirements that the city has um, as well and, and how these things integrate with the laws um, right that are established around like yeah. what a police department is um, like mass mass has its own definitions there um, <laughs> so i mean it, it sounds like a lot of things um but then also no um, i think i think it's all do doable honestly uh, yeah. a lot of it is building all, it's, it's about being more explicit and clarifying some stuff while also um you know, really framing what our what our mission is. I think it's great. Um, the other um, the other part of this is going to be, um, and I still haven't um, sort of framed this the way that I want. But like, what is the cost of a new department? Um, just because it's been brought up a lot, and sort of thinking about what are the avenues? Because at the end of this, we probably want to say, all right, here are these. At the the commission is going to have a whole bunch more. It's not just us, but sort of preparing as much as we can to say, all right, here are the changes. Here are you know all the different pots that you can dip into. You know, maybe make it piecemeal, right? Like it's, <laughs> but here's where you can find funding for those programs so that it's not, um, it's not just, oh, that's a lot of money. We can't do it. Um, but to say like, here's here's the ways you can do it in different. You know, different funding models for different things. Um, uh, so I think that's that's important. And Absolutely. I still have to I still have to reach out because I think the you know if I reach out now, um, I'm not gonna lie, I think the the response back is gonna be well that depends on what how big the department is and what it's supposed to be doing and where it's housed and all those sort of things. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how we def how we define those recommendations um, will play a role in that too. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, so Dan, do you have all? Do you, have, do you by chance? I know you said you have your your scribbling, but uh, do you have all those bullet points somewhere that you could disseminate it to us? Because I'd love to look look over them. Uh, because yeah. I don't know about y'all, but it's hard for me to keep like a million points in my head unless I've like look at them over and over again and rehearse them and like made them very clear and concrete yeah that's if um yeah that, that's why i have to write like everything is written down on my tablet or it's it's gone just in one ear out the yeah. other um <laughs> i can i can take these and then um send a list to noah uh who can then oh, that'd be great. distribute it that'd be great um because that way we can you know, we can start, you can start to form up like, um, Josie, I don't know if you got the, I think you got the draft of our sort of timeline broadly. Um, and we'll present uh, that to the... I believe, I believe I did, but I, let me check, I have my email open. And Michael, you might not have seen this yet. Um, no. So I can share the screen a little bit. Oop, no, I can't, the host. Uh, Noah, can you <laughs> allow screen sharing or make me a co-host? Boom, done and done. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Uh, Noah, you, you shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it should be good on. now. Okay. Um, Trying to undermine me. <laughs> just too fast. That's all. It's just too fast. Um, so. Hope it's not too. It's, it's going to be small. This was meant to be read, not shared. Um, 
Let me zoom in a little bit. I guess we'll go 125, sure, why not? Um, but basically laying out the weeks um, and then what each group is sort of doing <laughs> for that. Um, and so making sure that we have, um, you know, I have us sort of like, I just, this is not something that is concrete. We have to discuss this, um, but trying to figure out like um, what we are like. So like we're working on sort of our drafts and our collecting information, reading, doing these sort of contract readings, um, mm -hmm. but then getting to a point where we start to review the other sub the other subcommittees recommendations. And then we can highlight budgetary challenges and opportunities, which is, Sort of just saying, like, how do, how do those, how might those things be funded, or where do we want the sit, where would we recommend the city look for those funding opportunities? Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the recommendations on different topics, and I think we we're gonna want to have our recommendations, especially for contract language and things like that, ready to present and discuss at the whole commission, so we can make this report something that we're all at least informed about as things are added yeah. and then working towards like what model, like whatever model of consensus we, we sort of fall on, um, but making sure that everybody has, a, everybody feels comfortable with what is in that, that report. Um, and we also have for the, the next full commission meeting is to also discuss our path forward um, and I'm just going to recognize, even though she's probably not going to speak, but I'm going to recognize Cynthia as the main driver for this um, with a lot of good ideas about like what what we can do to make sure that we're moving in the right direction and continually focusing on what we need to produce. Um, <laughs> just, you know, um, to really to really get like sort of down to the, the concrete part. Um, I'm not a project manager and I'm not great at it. So I really appreciate having her <laughs> here with this. Um, but, but thinking about what we want to fill in here in terms of concrete things that we can also hold ourselves accountable to make sure that it's done beforehand. Um, so all that being said, <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I started out with a reason yeah, to, share, to share that, and I don't remember what it was. When when will that be? We're we're going to discuss that next week. So will we see that before? Yep. Okay, great. Um, and I got to write all I got to write all those dates down so I don't uh, overbook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, it was yeah. it was essentially um, it's essentially the 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 structure that we sort of talked about is basically. We're going to reduce the number, uh, or we're going to reduce the time of the full commission meetings to two hours and have them focused around you know, a topic or a couple of topics so that we can discuss it, get everybody on the same page, um, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that we know what we're discussing or what's being put into the into the recommendations, um, and sort of think about them holistically, um, and then having. Full commission meetings every Tuesday. Ooh, stop. That's smart. Um, <laughs> so it's still, you know, it's still an hour more of general committee, uh, general commission meeting time, but distributed in that biweekly fashion, so that we're still, we're still getting more time together um, and recommending that subcommittees start to work together, um, attending each other's meetings just to know what what everyone where everyone is and what they're thinking about um, mm -hmm. so and the two hearings oh, I, that was a, one of them on a saturday that's great uh yes i believe so that's, um that's really super i think yeah i'm gonna say yes but if it's not we can also amend some of those um i think one of the things was to make sure that Oh. Sorry, my cat is like trying to play with a plastic or a paper bag. Um, plastic. But um, to make sure that the the committee or the outreach subcommittee has enough time to get information from people, but also that 
we can listen to the people that speak at public comment and still have time to like understand, digest, internalize, and then affect the recommendations that we get there, the information, the themes, all those sort of things. And so we can still yeah. react um, and we're not left at the last minute of just like, wow, we should have changed. <laughs> yeah, so, and I don't think we'll, we'll get that. Yeah, you cool now? All right. Um, I don't think we'll get like vastly different things. Like, I don't think we're gonna find like the community needs something drastically different than what we've already sort of looked at and thought about, but it's really nice to right. react and reframe. Definitely, definitely. I love it. Uh, I'm getting uh, I'm getting uh, notice from Noah that we should probably discuss now that we are uh, on a bi-weekly or uh, every week with a new uh, full commission lineup. You know, what kind of day do we want to meet on next? I think that's really important for us to kind of figure out, you know, how not only how long do we want to meet next time, um, maybe a little bit of what our focus will be with this new uh, schedule. And uh, yeah, what time and make sure that it doesn't kind of overlap with any other uh, meeting for, you know, Noah's sanity. No, no more double booking. Right. Um, as per usual for me, any, any time after five is, is more than is more than OK. Um, any day of the week, uh, if you all wanted to do weekends, uh, you could convince me. But I usually work. I usually work Saturdays, um, so Saturday's a tough day for me uh, to try to meet. Uh, but but in the evening, just about Thursdays are are difficult every other week because of council. Um, mm -hmm. But but every other um, the same as you basically after after work I'm I'm fine. Yeah. Um, most weeknights. Um, after five um but the only caveat that i have is like next week is the first week of classes and uh my schedule like my workload just keeps increasing so like i'm gonna say monday of next week i i i don't know i know i will not have capacity to meet on monday <laughs> okay yeah even if sure, i finish sure. work um but like wednesday thursday of that week um wait wait Hold on. What's the the outreach? And it sounds like you have the most complicated schedule. Like we can we can tailor this to you. It sounds. Yeah. Uh, okay. Noah says Thursday is open, so I, I, I have I have council next oh, Thursday. Right. Um. <laughs> what about Friday? I don't love it, but yeah, good. I don't love it <laughs> for, for, yeah. just because I like to relax, but like I am more than capable of doing Friday. <laughs> Yeah, I, I could do Wednesday or Friday, no problem. Yeah, Friday sounds good. Yeah, I think the same, same time, five to seven. Uh, can we bump to five thirty? I'm going to have to work until five. Yeah, yeah, I can do five thirty, five thirty to seven thirty, or five thirty to seven. Do I want to get a shorter meeting, a longer meeting? Oh, actually, um, thankfully, uh, Cynthia is reminding me that. Thursday is my outreach meeting. So um, if you wanted to do Wednesday as well, I know that was, does Wednesday work yeah. better? So it's not Friday uh, for anybody? I'm available, I'm available Wednesday. Awesome. Yeah, I'm also available Wednesday. Thank you, Cynthia, for knowing my schedule before, <laughs> before I do. <laughs> better than I do. Uh, it looks so like any time before 7.30. Uh, uh, Michael, do you still want to make it a 5.30 or do you want to make it a 5.00? Uh, I could I could do five that day. That's not a problem for me. Okay. Fridays. So, when, Fridays so Wednesday are, next yeah. week. Yeah. So Wednesday next week, five to seven. Uh, do we want public comment at the beginning? I I, yes. I don't think it's too bad. We don't get too much. We usually get. We don't get too much. I, I, yeah, I think we should always be open to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do we want a particular focus aside from just general kind of? Um, just going through what we've been <laughs> receiving and any new focus on um, retailoring the, the foundation that it was the preliminary report. So um, Josie, I'll get the, like the list of things that, that I've sort of noted um, typed up. Sure. And you as the chair, you could sort of put those on the agenda as you see fit. So yep. maybe like two or three of the things. 
Yep. I love it. That sounds great. That sounds great. I just, I just have to say it out loud or else I'm going to be razor thin sending it over to Noah. And I don't want to do that to them anymore. <laughs> Appreciate you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm struggling over here. I hate badgering y'all so much. It's like not my name. No, please, please, like yell at me. <laughs> That's the unfortunate role of the admin. Two hours left. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah, I think. Uh, Doing like scheduling, doing scheduling at the end of the meetings and the agenda at the end of the meeting seems like it helps people. Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. It looks like our constituents Great. are dropping like flies. <laughs> I think they're all heading to the next. Uh, Probably. Yeah. To the next meeting. To the cool kids club, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we decided okay. Wednesday the third at from five, five, to, five, five to seven, five. I believe. Great. Okay. Yep. Super. I will um, send you a more detailed um, agenda. Hopefully, either tonight or tomorrow, uh, Noah. That sounds great. Thank you. Awesome. So that's that's settled. Uh, is there anything else we want to discuss tonight? Any new business? Um, I mean, we still have we technically still have twenty five minutes, or if we want to, you know, I'm not suggesting anything, but perhaps yeah, I, I, I'm I, I'm I'm I think we've covered an awful lot, um, and I I think there's a lot to do still. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I guess uh, yeah. I guess my last question is, um, and uh, so Dan, for the general commission, um, last time we discussed uh, quote unquote homework, I think I've only received one piece of homework. Um, has there only been one piece of homework and is, is it too late to submit anymore? Um. I don't think we really have a lot like for the next for like the next full commission it's going to be a lot of time sort of fine tuning this um like fine tuning this process that we've laid out and sort of deciding when we want to talk about these different like focused topics um yeah and and also like what the the final thing like our final report is going to be <laughs> um, yeah yeah because that's that's still like out I'm really hoping that we can get away from the model that we used for the um, initial report, which is like okay. subcommittee by subcommittee. And really, I, I really want to focus on a strong narrative and, and a cohesive structure. Uh, yeah, so yeah. They do all of these things. We make sure that there's not overlap, um, you know, and, have mm -hmm. it, and there's a lot of different organizational ways, like short-term, long-term goals, um, you know, um, areas of, of of like areas of impact and things like that. Um, so I think that's what the majority of our time is gonna be. Um, but then yeah. as we have the next topics to like the next recommendations, that's when we can start getting some some homework because yeah. you know, we know that you right. know, in two weeks, we're gonna really talk about um, peer led response. So here's you know a summary of what the, the recommendation is <laughs> here's some supporting documentation. Um, you know, yeah. here's you know, websites of peer responder groups or examples of when it's worked well, those sort of things. And yeah. that's I the guess, sort I of guess, homework structure. Sorry. Awesome. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, definitely. I definitely think we need to have this kind of cohesive uh, rollout of our final report. Otherwise, I feel like, again, no offense, Michael. City Council and the mayor will have too easy of a time kind of picking and choosing, you know, what sort of changes will actually end up being happened. Uh, but if we form some sort some form of cohesive interlocking recommendations, things that rely on one another, then it'll be a lot harder to kind of pick apart and um, really get a lot more of these kind of recommendations through the door. Um, that's awesome. Great. Uh, then I guess I'll just email you, Dan, uh, on some later date about for that new topic. I definitely want the commission to spend um, a little bit of time, 
ho- hopefully um, some really fruitful discussion on uh, an abolition model uh, with some, you know, uh, information that hopefully all the commissioners will read. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of pooling together resources, but also trying to pick the most about overwhelming all the commissioners because, again, we're all doing this voluntarily. We all have lives outside of this. There's no need for you to read several big theory books on why abolition is the best uh, kind of model. There's more like kind of small uh, case studies and whatnot really kind of packs a punch. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Sounds good. Great. Fantastic. So with that, does anyone want to? I will do a journey. Okay. Second, That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> great. Noah, you want to uh, roll call us out of here? Yeah, Josie. Here, I'm yes. <laughs> <laughs> Present, uh, Dan. Yes. And Michael. Yes. Awesome. Most adjourn is up. Awesome. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Sorry for my Thank pride. You all. Great to connect with you. <laughs> Take Here's it easy, y'all. Right, bye.